Have you recently separated? Are you struggling to find out why your marriage broke down? In this video, I'm gonna break down five reasons why I think marriages fail. Roll credits. Gentlemen, my name is Spurus Janakopoulos and welcome to the G-Man YouTube channel. This is a channel dedicated for men who are separated or divorced. The intention of this group is to empower each other and transform into a much better version of yourself. A greater man, a G-Man. On this channel, we talk about things such as separation, divorce, fitness, fashion, mental health, and most important of all, dating. Because hey, isn't that the fun part, right? I myself am separated, so I know what all you men are going through. And this is the reason why I created this channel, because I want a support network for men, because, you know, we find it really hard to express ourselves. We're all meant to be like, you know, He-Man. That's not me. And this is probably the reason why heart disease is the number one killer in men, because we bottle shit in, we don't get it out, right? We dig it deep, deep down inside, we bury it in ourselves. No one wants to get divorced. I mean, we don't marry to begin with thinking that we're gonna end up being divorced. We see it as a bit of a failure divorce. We're embarrassed of it. So in this video, I am gonna break it down and give you the five reasons why I think most marriages fail. And you know what? If you're on the verge of a separation or you're not sure what's going on with your marriage at the moment, and you're finding it tough, you know what? These reasons may even help you. Number one. Lovers morph into parents. No one really knows what having kids does to a marriage. I'm going to start with this reason because I think this is one of the major reasons why a lot of marriages break down and fail. Having kids is really, really tough. I have kids. I don't regret having kids. I love my kids and I would not see a world without my kids. The arrival of children changes how a couple interacts. You become more business-like, more like partners. Your role is this, my role is that. It's tiring having kids. It's hard having kids because you don't have time. You don't even have time for yourself anymore. You don't have time to scratch your ass. You know, you're too exhausted. Look, there's no doubt that mums bear the brunt. Even when both parents work and even in marriages and we both spouses describe themselves as sharing the burden of household chores, most parents slide towards the gender stereotypical role of parenting. Mums are more likely to become the on-call parent. She's the one that gets up in the middle of the night when the child is sick. She's the one that gets the phone call when the child is sick at school. It's mums. They do the hard work, without a doubt. As mums tend to stop working or cut down their hours to stay home and look after the kids, the dads are the ones that have to bear the financial responsibility. So then a common pattern emerges. The dad spends more and more time at work trying to raise more money and bring money into the house while the mum stays at home having to look after crazy screaming children. So you come home, you're completely exhausted, you walk into the door, your wife hands over the baby to you and says, take them, I can't deal with it, I've had this child all day. But you are so exhausted, the last thing you wanna do is come home to look after a screaming kid. You wanna come sit on your ass, crack open a beer, watch a bit of telly, eat some dinner, and then go to bed. Cue in the feelings of frustration, guilt, and distress. So domestic duties double, and so does your bickering. Sometimes your parenting style cancel each other out. Couple time is now family time. You get no time to yourself. And don't even get me started on sex. You don't have any sex. Mums are just too exhausted. They are too exhausted from breastfeeding, from getting up in the middle of the night, from wiping dirty asses, from all the cleaning that they've got to do. They're exhausted. And, and they don't even have time to look after themselves, you know, let alone having a shower or doing their makeup or doing their hair. They don't feel attractive for you. You gotta look in the mirror and you gotta make sure you don't look like that. And, but you don't get that. You come home and you're like, hey, I've been working all day. I'm, I, I'm, I'm horny, baby. I want a bit of sex. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I make you horny, baby? Number 
two, we have different needs. Look, men and women are just different. It's got nothing to do with blame. Men get caught up in taking care of their family. We spend all day at work and we come home and we're completely exhausted and then we stop caring about our needs. We stop caring about our happiness. We basically withdraw. This then just feeds your wife's insecurities. Women are emotional. They need connection. They need support. But we just withdraw. And then this makes wives feel alone and we're so stupid and we so stupid that we say, what do you mean you're alone? I'm right here. I'm right next to you. We don't think the way she's thinking. So then your wife stops trying because she thinks you're not gonna meet her where she wants. She thinks that you don't care, but it's not that you don't care. You just don't need that deep emotional connection like she does. We just have different needs. We will always be different but that's what makes us great. We don't want someone that is like us. We want someone that is different. We want someone that compliments us. Don't forget to drop a like if you feel that this video is helping you. Number three, indifference. Indifference is when the other person is not caring about you and you don't care about them. When you are indifferent, sometimes you degrade the other person, that they don't matter. And ultimately in a relationship, we need to feel like we matter. It is the essential reason for connecting with people that we matter, we mean something to each other. I am someone, you care for me, you, you care for my well-being. you're proud of me. This is why we have relationships. When you are indifferent, the whole thing goes and that coldness creeps in and then you become completely disconnected. If you feel like you don't matter, you're gonna get defensive and attack all the time. You're gonna feel unhappy, you're gonna feel unheard, you're gonna be disconnected. Married couples usually have a disconnect with what one person is saying and the other one is hearing. Please subscribe if you're digging this channel. Number four, neglect. And this is where we take each other for granted. Most people care more about their dogs, their cars, their businesses than they do of their partners. People put everything into when they first start dating and then once they feel like they've sort of sealed the knot, they stop trying, get lazy, you get complacent. You know, you feel like uh, your, your partner is like a, like a cactus. Um, you don't have to look after it anymore, it just sits in the corner and it looks after itself. No, 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 no. Look, and sometimes this can lead to sort of verbal abuse, a little bit of like a, a disrespect. You know, we, we talk nicer to our friends and to our bosses and to everyone else as opposed to our partners. Now, if we were to talk like we do to our partners to our boss, do you think he'd put up with it? No. You're fired. We sort of have this sense that our partners are gonna always be there, so, you know, we can basically lash out at them. Number five, undesired. And this is where women are less interested in sex. Research proves that women get bored with monogamy sooner than men. Men's desires for long-term relationship gradually goes down. Women's desire for sex post-marriage plummets. It's often the story, the seduction, the romance often disappears for a woman. And this is the vital ingredient for a woman to have a long, beautiful, lasting, sexual, healthy relationship. I mean, you know what us men like. We think women are like, you know, like a like an app or like a Blu-ray player. I just put the disc in, put my disc in and uh, turn you on, baby, and let's go. Sorry, boys, it doesn't work. Foreplay often starts at the end of the previous orgasm and, you know, like not 10 minutes before the real thing, which is not the real thing for her. For her, it's what happens before. It's all about seduction with a woman. It's a tease, you tease your woman. You, you know, during the day, when you're at work, message her, tell her that you're thinking about her, that you're thinking about kissing her neck, slowly on her neck. Tease her, tease her. Don't just come home and think you're gonna stick it in. It's not what it looks like. Desire is about wanting someone. Drop a like if you're getting anything out of this video and it's helping you. Thanks for listening, and hopefully this video helped you out. Again, my name is Spirus Janakopoulos, and welcome to the G-Man YouTube channel. 
a channel about helping men empower each other and becoming a greater man, a greater version of yourself. Until next time. Bad, bad, bad.